Good morning, everybody. It's a Monday morning. Just getting ready to go. Got a garage for the crawl space. First truck just showed up, so we're getting in mixed up. 21 yards for two 10 and a half yard loads. Back down, back down on the ocean again. This one sits just a little bit off the water. But it's a pretty good spot. A little bit steep bank there, yeah, but people will buy land anywhere just to get on the water these days. So we're going to get this thing going. As soon as he gets mixed up, we'll get him back into place. Get the concrete pouring. Hey everyone, so in this video you're going to get to see us pour this garage floor that slopes out to the front and then just to the front of the video there's a crawl space we got a pour that has quite a bit of slope in it on one side and then at the end we got to fill in this big long trench that they put some electrical pipes in so you're going to see how we get to cover those pipes all in this video. Let me know if you guys like this style video where I just kind of let the video play out like, like we are right on the job, you get to hear the sounds the speed of the video uh, or of, of the job site you know, without, without me doing a ton of talking so let me know if you like these kind of videos and So we're using a 4000 PSI concrete on this with fiber mesh. We don't typically put wire mesh or rebar in these garages that have a frost wall around them like this because the floor really can't go anywhere. Now it could settle, but if the excavator does his job right, then the concrete's not going to settle. It's not going to really move anywhere. So the key is, you know, put the fiber mesh in it and then saw your contraction joints after you get done power troweling in. We don't really have any issues with cracking that way. So. This mix felt pretty good as we were pouring it. It wasn't really separating. Sometimes you'll get some mixes where the stone and the paste seem to separate a little bit, but this one seemed to hold together pretty good for us. Uh, we're also using a mid-range water reducer, so we can get it, you know, pretty loose. We like to pour right about this slump right here. This is probably it would probably slump out at about a six and a half, seven. And with the mid-range water reducer, that's perfectly fine. You're not going to lose any strength that way. And what we like about it is it's just it flows real good you can see how it flows so we can push it we can pull it we can screed it pretty easy without killing ourselves uh, we do at least one if not two of these every day of the week so you know we don't want to get into a slump where we're killing ourselves every day because at the end of the year we just get worn out
when I'm pouring right out of the chute like this, typically I like to work from left to right. So when I get the chute back all the way over this way to my right, I can the uh, driver can look right in the mirror and see me a little bit better than if he's looking on his passenger side mirror. And then you know he knows whether I want him to pull forward or stop or whatever. So that's why we don't we don't typically go like one way and then the other way. We'll go we'll go left to right, pull him ahead. And then I'll, I'll go all the way back over to the left again. I'll work my way to the right. So we're about seven or eight minutes now into the pour. We got most of this garage poured out, which this truck had ten and a half yards on him. We're gonna, I think we're just gonna empty him right out, get him out of here, so the second truck sitting out there in the road, we can get that second truck mixed in and you know backed in and get him stop mixing. But usually, if there's usually there's three or four of us. Um, Eric, Eric, the one in the red is actually a school teacher, but he's worked for us for over 20 years. So you know we get him for eight to ten weeks in the summer. And then it's mostly just, you know, me, Darren, and Luke. So whether there's three of us or four of us, we basically pour the same way whenever we're doing something like this. We like to get most of it poured out first. Darren's shooting the pads in the middle of the wet pads, and that's what we're going to strike our, our pads off from in the middle, and we'll use that to screed from. And then, you know, we, we're magging the outside edges, like right now, to a chalk line or to a top of wall, whatever whatever it happens to be on that day, but and we'll use that to screen off from in the middle. I mean, on the edges. So Darren and Luca screeding there. We call this kick screeding. As they're screeding, you know, they're just basically making sure their outside edge of the screed isn't digging in or leaving a hump. And Eric and I, you know, the puddlers are really making sure they, that concrete doesn't get low or it doesn't get too high. You can see as they pull the screed back, they get, they're pulling back a little bit of a roll of concrete. And that's exactly what we want them to do. We want them to be able to screed this whole bay. We call this a bay over there where they're at without them having to stop if they don't have to so um, if the puddlers are doing their job then the guys screeding shouldn't have to stop cool things of the four of us working together so long is we can all pretty much do everything you know it doesn't matter who's running the chute who's raking the concrete who's screening who's bow floating it doesn't really matter all we care about is it gets done so that that makes working together really really easy no one's hollering screaming or giving orders it's just a matter of okay this is what needs to get done let's do it and that's how that's how we've worked together for years
So how are you guys liking the sounds of the, the job site so far? I mean, you can hear the truck running in the background. You can hear us raking the concrete. You can hear the concrete, how it feels uh, when you're screeding. You can kind of hear that sound. And you can hear us kind of talking with each other back and forth. So just let me know down in the comments if, uh, you know, if you like hearing the job site like that. So the second truck is mixing up. Uh, I decided to put on, usually we put three Bofold handles on. I put a fourth one on here so I could get all the way across this. I believe this was about 26 feet wide, something like 34 feet long, 34 or 36 feet long. And it just, it made this, you know, the slump that we pour at and the mix design we use makes Bofold really easy. Typically, I'll just go back, I'll go down once and pull it back once and then I can set over and, and do uh, the next section. So it makes bull floating quite fast. And then it also smooths the surface out pretty nice. So that's gonna be, you know, an hour, hour and a half from now, that'll be the surface that will power trial. And it just makes power trialing a heck of a lot easier if you don't have a bunch of ratty looking spots on it. Well, this is the crawl space area. It's it's sloped kind of towards the water or away from where we are right now. And there was just some ledge in here and they just couldn't get it perfectly flat. So you can see that, that ledger in the, in the wall over there at the garage towards the top. That's where the floor joists are going to sit in. So in these six by six PT beams are going to, they're going to be about the height of the wooden deck when they're done decking this over. So there's not going to be much space in here, but they just wanted a concrete floor in here to help with the moisture. And I don't know if they're going to give them a little bit of storage in here. But our job was just to get them some type of rat slab in here. So we're pouring three or four inches up here. It, although you can't tell too well in the video, it just it had a slight slope to it. And then towards the bottom of the video where that other 6x6 beam is, it had a pretty sharp slope in about three feet it dipped about it dipped about three feet in three feet and then it flattened out right at the end you'll see um, when the video changes the angle but there's a lot of a lot of foundations that are poured on the coast like this have a lot of legend that our coast in Maine has a lot of rocks so and a lot of times these guys don't want to blast them out to get the full foundation so they just pour right over the ledge and that's that's what we're doing here in this one. Thank you. 
Can't take this out because it's blocking that pipe on this guy, so I'll let it roll over. Hold on, I Almost got it. We'll hold up on that last one for a sec. Right where Darren's magging right now on the left is where it really slopes off hard down to that little bottom piece they want to keep somewhat level because they got a water tank, they got some utility sitting on that part. But right where these guys are screeding right now it dip, starts dipping really hard about, like I said, it goes down about probably three feet in about three or four feet. So it's, it's you know, the concrete held its slope pretty good. Good enough so we could screed it downhill. Typically, you'll screed uphill when you're screeding the slope like that. As you can see right there, it held its slope pretty good. And then when we both loaded it, it actually it actually looked pretty good. You know, we try to get it as smooth as possible. Sometimes we'll have to mag it out by hand, but we was able to just use the bull float. You can see Luke right there using the bull float over it. It worked pretty good.
All right, that's done for the floors. Now what they also have us doing today is filling, filling over some electrical pipes, filling the trench, getting, I don't know, it's just their way of protecting the pipes, I guess, from being dug into later. But So we ordered some extra concrete for this, but we don't know if we're gonna have enough, so we'll just do what we can. Well, that's something we don't usually have to do, but we filled it in for them. It's just code in this town to fill in over that electrical trench, so we they asked to do it, and we did it. The excavator, the excavator guy right there was actually supposed to be here to help us, but as you can see, he didn't show up, so we just made it happen. Got it all covered, and that's it for that. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.